Hi everyone and welcome to part one of the questions tutorial. As always, we start by rolling the Patreon credit roll, but since I'm recording this tutorial the day after recording the drive time tutorial, there are no new patrons to welcome in the top tier. That leaves me with the opportunity to thank both Robert, Gennady and Fabian for their continued support. Those guys were here pretty much from the start. If you are looking for early access notation or tablature files, then please head over to the Patreon page as well. If you want to support the channel without monthly fees, then there is a PayPal donate link down below in the description. Questions was a welcome change of pace. After doing quite a few difficult Tommy Emmanuel songs, this one certainly qualifies as one of his easier songs. Now bear in mind, it's still a Tommy Emmanuel song, so calling this one easy is probably a stretch. There are quite a few chord voicings with the thumb over the side of the neck, but in this particular song, it is possible to uh, replace each and every one of them with a more traditional fingering without sacrificing anything at all, not the slightest detail has to be altered. If I have to point out one major difficulty in this song, then it's the roll of the pinky on the fretting hand, because this little guy is getting quite a workout. Now, if that doesn't scare you, I suggest we get straight to work. So let's dive into the song. All you need is a guitar in standard tuning. For the sake of convenience, I've recorded this tutorial on a standard tuned acoustic. Tommy's most recent uh, YouTube version was played on an acoustic that is tuned down one full step, so from D to D and the intervals in between are just standard tuning. And I think the original recording and definitely some of the live versions are played on a guitar that is tuned down one and a half step, so from C sharp to C sharp. Just so you wouldn't always have to tune down whenever you want to work at a certain part of this video, I just kept the guitar in standard tuning, it's probably easiest for everyone. As soon as you get the whole song down, tune down your guitar a full step or one and a half steps, and then you can really experience those rumbling lows underneath that melody. That being said, let's dive straight into the intro and let's see what you have to get down. first chord and the little intro lick into the verse. So let's have a look at those chord voicings first. As you may have noticed, there's quite a lot of work with the thumb over the side of the neck. I'm going to show you a few alternatives as well. Have a good look at them. Pick something that works for you because a lot of these chords will pop up again in the chorus, so you will have to play them quite a few times throughout the song. We're starting with the D chord thumb on the 10th fret over the side of the neck, ring finger and pinky 12th fret on the A and D string, and then the middle finger on the 11th fret of the G string. That's the first chord, and you're starting with an open E string on top, so you have to make sure that your fingers are nice and upright, so you can keep that top E string ringing out. Then moving to an A chord with a C sharp in the bass, again, thumb over the side of the neck on the 9th fret this time, ring finger 11th fret on the D string, index finger 9th fret on the G string, and middle finger 10th fret on the B string. We are still keeping that top E string open. So you're starting again with nothing but that bass string and an open E string. Then moving to a C chord with an added sixth, again, thumb over the side of the neck on the eighth fret, ring finger, 10th fret, D string, middle finger, ninth fret on the G string, pinky, 10th fret on the B string, and again, open E string on top. So it's three times the same picking pattern, always starting with a bass note 
and an open E string, then playing an arpeggio of some of those chord tones. Some, Tommy sometimes likes to fill in the gaps in between those chords with an extra bass note. Uh, you can do this as you see fit. You don't have to do it each time, but once in a while surely doesn't hurt. This is what it sounds like up until that point. And in just one of those bass notes, for instance, and then you're going four. This is a tricky chord in the beginning. If you come from that C7 chord down, then you have to keep the pinky and the middle finger where they are and apply a little bar. You need the low E string and D string to sound out. And you have to still make sure that the open E string is still playable uh, as an open string. So make sure that bar doesn't hit or doesn't touch that open string. So coming from the C chord. Again, bass note, open string. And this is, this is a strange fingering, that middle finger and that pinky. But the middle finger will now slide to the 8th fret right away. So that tricky fingering with the pinky and the middle finger while stretching out for that bar is just something that it doesn't take long to hold down or you don't have to hold down that chord for a long while you're sliding down to the 8th fret right away. Let's play those four bars back to back. We're going to continue to that uh, artificial harmonic run right away, but there are probably already a lot of people who are thinking, man, that thumb, that really hurts. There is an alternative for each chord. It isn't actually even necessary to use the thumb at all. You can start out with the first chord for this. Index finger, ring finger, pinky, middle finger, the exact same chord. So instead of using the thumb, just use the index finger. The second chord is a bit trickier. Index finger on the 9th fret on the low E string and then pinky, middle finger, ring finger on the 11th, 9th and 10th fret. Again with the open E string, dropping down the index finger one fret more for this C 6th chord, index finger on the 8th fret and then ring finger 10th fret, middle finger 9th fret, pinky 10th fret. And then again, keeping down that middle finger and pinky as you go for the bar. And that part of, uh, for the B chord is the exact same thing as before. So that's a possibility as well. That's the tricky chord. Exact, exact same thing, the exact same notes. Now the thing has changed, only the fingering. No thumb, but the index finger. I find it easiest in some parts of the song to switch them around. I often play the first D chord, and you will see in a second why, that often D chord like this, then switching to that A over C sharp chord like this, then back to the C chord with the index finger, because this is actually a little easier to move down to get that bar across the seventh fret. So see what works for you. I've shown you the original Tommy Emanuel method and the uh, variations or the alternatives on that. And you can pick and choose whatever works for you. Then we are heading for a typical Tommy Emanuel artificial harmonic run. Bar across the seventh fret, across five strings. Hammering on and pulling off on the 9th fret on the high E string. And then it's all artificial harmonics on the 19th fret. So what you do if you have never done this, you can try this at the 12th fret. Point your index finger lightly to where the natural harmonic on the 12th fret uh, would sound out. Just lightly above, straight above the fret. Point your index finger to that uh, particular spot and then pluck with the thumb of the right hand or your picking hand, whatever hand that may be, if you're left-handed. So 
that's the first the first thing to try is to see if you can get those harmonics out that way without incorporating the left hand. So just on the 12th fret, lightly touching and lightly plucking those strings with the thumb underneath. The hard part is keeping your index finger stable and at the same spot while plucking that string underneath. Then we are adding in that bar at the 7th fret. We're counting up 12 frets extra, so that means we are ending up on the 9th fret and we're leaving that E string open. So we're going to pluck that harmonica at the 19th fret over an open E string. Uh, that's the basic technique. So you're going to do the same thing here. So plucking out those harmonics. Uh, no worries if they sound a bit silent. These harmonics or this type of technique sounds a lot more clear if you use a thumb pick or a plectrum. In this case, tummy doesn't, so it's, it's, it's just plain flesh of the thumb you're uh, striking the string with. Uh, and in this particular case, even in his recording, those harmonics just sound a little less bright and carry a little less volume than usual. Let's have a look, because you will have to add in a few open strings as well. I usually pl pluck those open strings with the ring finger or the middle finger. In my case, mostly the ring finger. So what is happening is harmonic on the low E and A string, harmonic, harmonic, and then plucking for the B string with the bar at the seventh fret. So harmonic, harmonic, B string, with the ring finger, harmonic on the D string, plucking the E string open and hammering on to the 9th fret again. Again, harmonic on the 7th fret, harmonic, sorry, harmonic on the G string, not 7th fret, but harmonic on the G string, and straight after that, a harmonic on the B string. I'm showing you, I just made one little mistake. Instead of using the ring finger for that hammer on, if it is possible for you, use the middle finger because right away you will have to stretch for the 12th fret. I find it a little easier if you use the middle finger for the hammer on to then get to the 12th fret. If you use the ring finger, then this stretch is a bit awkward. Okay, so one more time. Harmonic E string, harmonic A string, B string, just playing, harmonic D string, E string, hammering on, harmonic G string, B string, and then adding in the pinky on the 12th fret on the high E string. That's the full lick. That's the full harmonic lick. If you do it this slowly, it sounds a bit disconnected. As soon as you speed it up and you pick the volume up just a little, it, it will start to blend. One more time, that harmonic lick. Maybe the hardest part about playing that harmonic is as you are using the thumb to pluck those uh, harmonics uh, on the strings here, make sure that you don't accidentally mute one of the adjacent strings because everything has to ring out as long as possible. then move to an open E string. Tommy leaves that ringing out and then he uses the thumb over the side of the neck just to hammer on lightly. It's not really meant as, as a full on hammer on, but just as an effect sliding up. And then he will play an open A string as the bass note for the next bar. You don't have to use the thumb for that slide. I don't see any real reason since you're ending up on an open bass string. So you can either use the thumb over the side of the neck or just use, let's say, the index finger. Whatever you use, the, the, the effect will be roughly the same. Then you move to an A chord and you just play the bass note with the thumb and everything else is really light strumming. With a hammer on at the very last beat with the pinky on the G string to the 7th fret. Don't pay too much attention to which strings you would pl you should play down below in the tablature. With the thumb, it, you can basically play all the strings except for the low E string. And then on the beginning of the next bar, you pluck the low A string and the high E string at the same time. And you end with 
a pull off back to the 6th fret on the G string. Same thing. And then the very last time we're moving to the low E string. Just a few arpeggiated notes and then you will be launching in into that uh, opening lick of the verse, but we'll tackle that part as soon as we uh, address the verse. That was the full intro. Now, uh, consider which option to take in terms of those fingerings, because in the chorus, a lot of this stuff will pop up again. I'm gonna play the intro one more time, really slowly, then it's off to the next section. From that last chord on, we're moving straight into the verse. We want to play through it one time and then explain everything. After that, there's that little lick into the chorus. We'll address that once we get into the chorus. Now, you're starting with that open string lick. What you're doing is you're coming down from this chord and to glue those two move movements together, the intro and the verse, you're keeping down that ring finger. So you have one string ringing out just a little bit more to an open E string, then pinky 7th fret on the B string, index finger 4th fret on the, G, on the high E string, and then sliding up and straight back down. Back to the B string and back to the open E string. This little uh, single note lick is tricky in the beginning. We've talked about this before. As guitar players, when we want a higher sounding note, we move to a thinner string. In these types of open string licks, that uh, type of reasoning doesn't really fly. So you have to really memorize this. So open E string, seventh fret on the B string, sliding up and down while keeping down those other notes to the B string and back to the E string. Then moving to an F sharp chord on the F sharp minor chord on the second fret. Easy enough. Thumb over the side of the next second fret. Little bar across the second fret on both the G and B strings, adding in the ring finger on the fourth fret on the D string. That's all you have to play. Thumb. You could also play this. There is not a single reason why you should use or uh, necessarily have to use the thumb over this side of the neck, can use a bar as well. Sounds exactly the same. To an E chord with a G sharp in the bass, I usually play it like I always do with the ring finger on the 4th fret on the low E string, index finger 2nd fret on the D string, pinky 4th fret on the G string. Tommy plays it like this, he uses the middle finger and the ring finger. I use the ring finger and the pinky, whatever works for you. And then to a bar across the 2nd fret, and you really uh, Pulling that chord apart just a little bit more than usual, really almost addressing each note, each note separately. So a little roll in, in, in the picking hand, thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, 
just really spreading that chord out and then hammering on with the ring finger to the fourth fret on the G string and the pinky on the fifth fret of the B string. Moving, keeping down that bar across the high E string as well, moving to the high E string while keeping down the bar, removing everything else and playing the second fret on the G string. Adding in the bass note, pinky, fifth fret on the A string. And adding, ending that little part with a, a little chord, two strings, three strings, doesn't really matter. So that's what in the tablature, that's what Tommy plays in the live version. Could just as well play. So use thumb, index finger, and then middle finger and ring finger to close that part out with. Everything we have up until that point. And that's a tricky technique right at the end. So after that D chord, you're moving to open E string with a partial E major chord, you're not playing the A string, just the 2nd fret on the D string, 1st fret on the G string. And then Tommy pulls a combination of techniques, I had never seen someone do this up until transcribing this tutorial. He's sliding up the index finger to the 2nd fret, so the middle finger stays where he is. The index finger will slide up to the 2nd fret and at the same time you will hammer on with the ring finger from the open B string to the second fret. So what you are getting really slowly is, it's, it's really hard to do this slowly, so sliding up while, this is not gonna sound good, sliding up while putting down, putting down that hammer on at the same time. This is done really quickly. that part off with uh, an open A bass string. So sliding up with the index finger while hammering down with the ring finger while keeping the middle finger down on the D string. cool technique but not the easiest thing to do if you want to skip past this while keeping one of those embellishments then you could play and just move the index finger up by itself and just hammer on with the ring finger on the B string sounds a little bit different this is what I always thought Tommy played so I, I was wrong but it doesn't sound half bad either was the alternative fill. So just the chord, then moving up the index finger and ham only hammering on with the ring finger. So that's an alternative. Now the second part of the chorus starts right away again with that same open string lick. We know that part is the exact same thing. to a 6th on the 5th fret, middle finger 6th fret on the G string, index finger 5th fret on the high E string, and you're sliding up, coming with the same fingering from the 3rd or 4th fret, doesn't really matter how far this uh, slide gets to move. Hammering on to the 7th fret with the ring finger and the pinky, and sliding up to the 9th fret. plucking that uh, ninth fret while you're laying down a bar across the seventh fret. And then this is the, the part where it, it's really demanding for the pinky and you'll be doing this a lot throughout the song. You're ending up on that ninth fret and then the pinky by itself will slide up 
back down or so we'll slide up sorry to the 10th fret back down and then perform a pull off to the seventh fret then moving to the middle finger on the eighth fret on the g string and bear in mind you're sliding up So the volume of that high E note has to carry over from the previous bar. You're not plucking that string a second time, you're adding in the bass note and then with the volume from the previous bar you have to perform that slide up, down and pull off, right, up, right back to back to each other. Adding in the ring finger on the A string. 9th fret giving you a full B dominant 7th chord and then with really heavy palm muting you're going to play the A, D, G and B string while keeping down this bar. Pinky from the 10th to the 12th fret sliding up make sure this note carries over into the next bar. to a little bar across three strings on the 10th fret on the G string, B string and E string adding in an open D bass note. Same thing with the pinky. Plucking this time makes it a bit easier. Sliding from the 13th fret to the 12th fret and then pulling off and in between your really really softly playing that 10th fret chord section. Then with the pinky to the 12th fret on the B string, sliding up to the 14th fret, that might hurt for a second. Back to the high E string, you're still keeping down that bar. As the final chord, hammering on from the 10th fret with the pinky to the 12th fret and keeping the ring finger on the D string, 12th fret as well. And that is where the verse is concluded. That last part is something that Tommy plays different in each and every video I saw him play this song in. Um, and this is a, a, a part of the song where he really plays with the timing. He doesn't keep steady time. He really slows down drastically. And it is hard to uh, transcribe exactly what he is playing in terms of rhythm. So I so, sort of shoehorned this part into something I could explain and teach and play in a steady tempo. But if you feel like replacing or, or uh, putting some notes in a different spot in terms of timing, then go ahead. That is exactly what he is doing in this part as well. And then we're heading into the chorus with the next fill. Now, this was the full verse. Let me play this for you one time, back to back. I'm first going to play the second part of the verse we just saw, and then I'm going to play the verse back to back, the whole thing really slowly, so you can get a good final look at what is happening. Then we will uh, address the chorus straight away after that. Second part of the verse, here we go. that second part we just looked at. Now I'm going to play the full verse from start to finish. We're even going to start in that, that those four final bars of the intro, just to show you how it transfers from that final intro section to the verse section itself. Here we go. <laughs>
full verse. So that is all for the intro and the verse and the perfect spot to conclude part one of the tutorial. Take some time to get this into your fingers. Part two will be published next week and in that part we'll be taking a look at both the chorus and the bridge. See you then.